God, it's all pine. Miles and miles of pinus radiata. That's terrible. Endangered species. Yeah, right. Local to a very small area. A very small area in northern, coastal northern California, but quite invasive all around the world. Unintentionally planted for kind of shit quality lumber. Look at all the volcanic mounds, though. All these, all these uh, hills are just vo volcanic mounds. Wow, look at that. It's a monoculture of even-aged uh, redwood trees without any of the diversity that one might find in a redwood forest, without any of the understory plants. Humans can't help themselves, man. You got to you got to create somewhere else. You can't just appreciate where you are. You have to try to go for something else. It's, it's all fuckery. This is hilarious. Look, there. <laughs> you ever seen anything like this? I have never seen anything like this. This is crazy. It's like a barren wasteland of redwoods. It is it's like a barren desert. It, it feels it almost feels like we're in California, but there's nothing else here. There's no understory plants. Oh, there's a fern. You can see as we get closer to the edge of the actual natural forest, Alan. you get a little bit more understories. But well, look, here's here's cunning hamia, another non-native Taxodiaceous tree, formerly in the Taxodiaceae, which has now been merged with Cupressaceae, the redwood family. And then you start getting into the actual native forest, but it still looks like it's a lot of uh, this shit. Is that is that Dacrocarpus or Doug fir? But that's nuts. Look at it. <laughs> just goes to show you man some of our native plants are invasive other places i don't know if redwood's necessarily invasive but i do wonder why they're not planting redwood as a lumber tree and instead they're they're planting that shitty radiata pine redwood seems like it's a much more valuable lumber and faster growing you know how is this any different from walking through a cornfield that's, that's what it feels like there's no diversity here at all it's all just sequoia semperverance Okay, Alan, so despite the virtual botanical desert that we're in, it's low diversity, we still got some nice uh, some nice mushroom diversity here, right? What is what is this? What are we looking at? This is a species of Gliophorus, and you can tell it's Gliophorus and not Hygrosabe because it has a very viscid stem. It's like covered in a layer of slime and a viscid cap. So it's got the sticky, sticky and slimy stems, right? Exactly. So we, we've, it's, I can't help but notice it's a beautiful shade of green. It's like a brilliant green and it's growing on a little bed of moss on uh, this rotting stump right here. Do you often find Gliophorus with moss? Yeah, a lot of Hygrosabe and Gliophorus only grow with moss. So is Hygrosabe related to this? Is it in the same family? Yeah, it's a sister genus. Look at it. They just, they got the hot shit. Every, you, get, you like the hot shit? They got all oh, these warm go pools and stuff. Here. You can just go get in there. You don't want to get in that one, though. Look at all the look. It's get some hard water right there. That's quite deep. Thank a subduction zone near you. Okay, welcome to another episode of Crime Pays with Biden. It doesn't. I hope you like the hot shit because we got a lot of hot stuff here. You know, do you like the hot shit dot com? Now, normally when I would ask people that, I'd be referring to capsaicin and spiciness. You know, like when we were stealing overtime at the railroad. You know, we go sit at a taqueria, I'd say to you know, ask the brakeman or something, do you like the hot shit? In this case, I'm actually talking about geothermal hot shit due to the presence of a subduction zone and uh, more specifically a large magma chamber, which is very close to the surface here, causing these 100 degrees Celsius temperature warm pools, which would certainly scald you or you to jump into one. Step over here, you can see got a lot of precipitate minerals on the, uh, on the edge of this uh, pool right there, and it goes quite deep as well. It's about a you know, 20-footer. 20 foot deep, we got all this steam and stuff. Kind of smells like rotten eggs, kind of like a fart. You know, like maybe someone had, uh, ate some bad beans or something. I mean, shit, that happens to me if I just have beans in, you know, in general. No spice, no turmeric, nothing. You see, since it's New Zealand, everyone's nice here and it's, uh, you know, affordable. You got healthcare taken care of, you know, they even put little hot pools up for people. You don't got to worry about, you know, homeless people coming to shit in them or some tweaker, you know, taking a bath in one, being there for 20 hours on end till his skin's all wrinkly, you know, but, uh, Real nice though. I mean, you're allowed to actually put your feet in there, and the water, of course, is generally so high you don't have to worry about too many microbes. You know, wonder. I wonder if there's ever been hippies banging there. That probably happens every once in a while, though. Now, certainly the fart smell and the 100 degrees Celsius boiling water are interesting. But what might be more interesting to the botanically inclined are plants that have evolved to grow specifically on geothermal soil, like this one, Kunzia tenuicaulis, the geothermal conica, the geothermal species of Kunzia. 
Oh yeah, it smells like fireworks right now. That distinct sulfur smell. This is a this is a plant in the eucalyptus family Myrtaceae in the genus Kunzia, which is adapted towards growing on these very specific soil. I mean, you can see that thing is growing right in this very sulfur rich and uh, quite likely very acidic soil. Probably very strong mycorrhizal associates as well, like uh, many members of the eucalyptus family Myrtaceae. See that? Look at those little capsules. White flowers when it's going off. Pretty remarkable. I've seen a lot of weird cases of uh, soil endemics, edaphic endemics, but certainly it's rare that you find one adapted to geothermal areas. Ariagonum argophyllum over there by Elko, Nevada does it. The silver leaf buckwheat, tiny little plant, grows on a geo next to a geothermal pool that's probably a little bit higher than this actually. But another weird case of plant speciation. Plant speciation in terms of adapting to uh, localized stresses and environmental conditions. And this whole area, of course, is uh, volcanic. All, almost all of the central part of the North Island of New Zealand is, is volcanic. You got two subduction zones. You got the Pacific Plate going beneath the uh, Australian Plate in the north, then you got a transfer fault, and in the south, you got the uh, Australian Plate going beneath the Pacific Plate. So they're kind of twi almost twisting around each other. Now here's Alan for scale. Alan, you want to tell us what you're looking for over there? A whole bunch of mushrooms here. This looks like it might be a gallerina or an extremely tiny cortinarius. Cortinarius would of course be a ectomycorrhizal, huh? Yeah. You can't tell what it is though yet, huh? It could really go either way. They're on the ground which points in favor of cortinarius, but there's not very many cortinarius that are this small. And right here we got Leptospermum scoparium, Manuka florin. Okay, see that? Like flowers, okay, blunt needles. Looks a lot like its uh, close associate, this Kunzia, but a different genus without the flowers. It's, you know, you stuck on leaves to look at that Kunzia. You can see the, the Kunzia leaves are much narrower, more slender, not as short, stout, and acute as the Leptospermum on the right. Leptospermum scoparium, common as hell, common in Australia, common in Tasmania, and common in New Zealand. But uh, do not confuse it with this edaphic endemic, this uh, Kunzia tenue calls. Look, it's a boiling mud pit. Pretty hot. Can't be any hotter than 100 degrees Celsius, 212 Fahrenheit. Look at the gentle decritium. How nice. Oh, look, it's a lycopod, Lycopodiella cernua. See what those... Those pendant sporophylls. Ground is very warm. It's like a heating blanket. You got a smoking hot fumarole over there, belching forth. Oh, a very sulfuric, a very sulfuric smelling gas. So I don't know, I'm a little confused. Is it, is it acidic soil or is it alkali soil? Obviously the precipitate is gonna have a lot of bicarbonate in it. Deposits that contain a lot of silica are called sintered, but uh, I believe these contain more bicarbonate. The chemistry changes, and new fumaroles and uh, mud pools can pop up at any time, anywhere in this area. It's a comforting thought. Oh, look at it! Some jackass tagged his name up there. See right there, you got that Kunzia tenuicollis. Those small gray fruits on it, those dried capsules, and then right down there, you got Leptospermum scoparium. Real nice smell here. You can see we're near a boiling mud pit, just puking, farting, spitting mud everywhere. Sounds like a great old time. And, uh, you know, of course, I'm on the other side of the fence, so we're going to go ahead and release these videos after we've already left the country. It's one of numerous uh, statute of limitations. I mean, it's not really statute of limitations, but it's, you know, they're not going to extradite me for breaking any of the petty laws we've broken here. Let's hope. They might ban me from the country. Anyway, uh, look at these interesting mushrooms we have. Now, those are just donuts some jackass threw over here. It wasn't me. I don't eat that shit. But uh, these, of course, are a pretty interesting mushroom. You can see much darker in the center, lighter on the marches. You got a nice annulus down there, too, growing a little moss bed. Now, you can see they got this sign telling you not to jump in there, of course, which is good because some people need that, okay? When we're not shaming them for it, some people actually need that. You can see the whole area is just a boiling. I mean, it's got to be 100 degrees. Very, probably some very interesting microorganisms right there. Remember, tack palm rice was produced from a species of archaea grown in Yellowstone National Park. But of course, much different geothermal cause down there. That's just a, a volcanic hotspot, not a subduction zone. This is a subduction zone volcanism, nice. 
Look at it, almost kind of spooky. I'd like to see some hippies try and bang in there. Probably wouldn't work too well, huh? It's a little, little too hot. Seen some naked guy playing a flute in there. That's what happens if you go to the eastern side of Sierra Nevada hot springs. They're all ruined now. They're all blown up. You know, you used, used to be you go to those hot springs, maybe you'd see some old guy with his penis out. Now, you, now you're just going to see 40, 40 asses. You know, with a whole bunch of fancy Toyota FJ cruisers and shit in the parking lot. It's just, it's, it's heinous. See, the, the traffic cone's a nice accent. Some young jackass went ahead and just, you know, the thing's going to be in there until it melts, probably. Or it degrades. Now, Alan, let's, let's take a close look at these mushrooms. Why don't you tell me about what's going on? Are these ectomycorrhizal? These are descolia. They're ectomycorrhizal, and they're in the Bulbidiaceae family, right next to Foliotina. You know, the nice thing about this smell, too, is you can't tell if I actually passed gas or if it's just the, just the natural effervescence of the surrounding landscape. You can see the donuts over there, too which uh, let's be sure not to mistake those for puffballs. So these are quite likely associating with, uh, what is this, Leptospermum or Kunzia, probably with both of them right above us. I can't see the fruits, you know, looking up to detect what, what exactly they are, but either way, it's an ectomycorrhizal associate. So what are some other uh, distinguishing characteristics of this genus? The main pe thing people first notice is the ring. The ring on the stem looks a lot like a Foliotina ring. It has the grooves on the top of the ring. Look at that cap. How would you describe that cap? It's just a little bit rugulose. A little, little brown donut in the center of it. Yeah, we've got brown spores and they're really fragile. Like when you try to pull them apart, they come apart really easily. And what's, are these toxic or make you puke or edible or what? I don't know if anyone's ever tried them. Now look at that, look at that beautiful annulus on that guy. See, you can see where he's still going. A little moss bed. A little moss bed, ooh. That's that's nice, that's looking nice right there. And what do you think we're getting whiffs of right now? Is that sulfur dioxide? Uh, it smells like hydrogen sulfide to me. Either one, sulfur dioxide is the stuff they put on apricots to preserve them, I'm allergic to it. Oh, oh God, oh, oh it's rough. Hey, settle down there, guy. Settle down, pal. Here we get another ectomycorrhizal mushroom, an associate of the family Myrtaceae. This is a species in the genus Lacaria. See, so you got a hygrophonous cap, pink gills, growing in a little moss bed beneath the, uh, I think this is Leptospermum. These Lacaria are awesome because they have spiny white spores that are in amyloid, and they're always growing with mycorrhizal host trees. What's in amyloid mean? In amyloid means it does not react to Melzer's reagent. And what's Melzer's reagent for the beginner mycologists out there? Melzer's reagent is an iodine and chloral hydrate solution. It's used for microscopy. It's really good for figuring out the genera of unknown mushrooms. So another diagnostic tool. Yep. Now the nice thing about being in the geothermal area is if you know you rip ass, someone walks into your cloud, you could just blame it on the mud pits. And what do we got here? This is a Cortinarius. So we got another ectomycorrhizal associate. Yeah, and this one has really cool, like fluorescent, probably fluorescent Cortina. Fluorescent Cortina, what's the Cortina, Alan? So the Cortina is like the partial veil in Cortinarius. It's a webby covering that covers the gills and then when the cap opens up, it drops and kind of just makes this, you see that ring zone right there? Oh. So the rusty spores stick to the Cortina, and that's very typical for Cortinarius. Oh, this is Kunzia, actually. Tenuacolis. Not Leptospermum. It's the rare one. Keep hearing those little fantails around. You know, the fart smells kind of nice. It is, you know? Like someone like ripped one in a van. It smells kind of sulfuric. Anyway, that's all I got for you this evening. Hopefully you got some out of that. Don't go stepping in a boiling mud pit. Go fuck yourself. Bye.